well, the time has finally come. The 3000 series back there, the 3205 that we've had for about 10 years, is ready to find a new home. The problem is, there are no hydraulics, and no power steering, no deck lift, and no forward or reverse. It's been sitting there for the entire season. It hasn't mowed at all this year, and that's kind of the reason that it's time for it to find a new home too, is yeah, we're just not using it anymore. I just kind of got bored with it because it was so reliable and never had any tinkering to do or, you know, really, it, you know, once once I put the time into it, it became a really reliable machine and didn't need any work and so other projects took over and it's time for it to find a new home. All right. So it starts, it starts and runs fine, it just will not move. Nothing will move. So, let's see if I can push it in there. Okay, so. This is a common issue on the 3000 series. I think I have an idea of what it is. In fact, I'm pretty sure, but I do need to confirm it before I order parts. So here's our 3205. This is a 1999 uh, 3205 with a 20 horse liquid cooled Kawasaki engine. I'll show you. That it starts and runs just fine. But so obviously nothing's working, and if you listen. When you push the pedals, you can hear it moving the swash plate in the hydro, but it makes a little bit of a noise, but there's no actual movement happening at all. Now something's going on right here. I've done the obvious things like, you know, check the fluid level. It's fine. Check the drive shaft, make sure the drive shaft was still spinning. It's fine, I think. Really, I can't see or get to any of this stuff until we pull the, the fender, so. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull the fender pan off and do a little bit. the fender pan and do a little bit deeper diagnosis. So, 3000 series, the way that I pull the fender pans in these, and this is obviously modified, like I've got extra stuff all hooked to it. It's got auxiliary lights, it's got this thing back here to hold stuff. It's got all kinds of crap that you won't have, but... Alright, let's grab some tools. Uh, we're doing standard SAE sockets and wrenches. Everything on the chassis is, is American. Okay, so if this is the first time you've pulled a fender pan on one of these. The hardest part is probably going to be the um, getting the bolts out of the seat track because the seat track probably won't want to move on you. The seat track here will, will seize right here. You've got a bolt, which is a Torx head, and I think it's, yeah, what is this? This is a T30. It's a T30 Torx there, there's four of them. Um, this one will come off, but that's because this fender pan's probably been off. Uh, since I've had the tractor, this fender pan's probably been off at least 10 times. I'll go over why that's been the case. Here in a minute. So 
So get the front ones of the seats all the way back and then slide the seat forward. A little further than that. Yeah, that's what happens. They don't, when it doesn't move, it gets seized. There we go. And then gain access to the rear ones back here. So if this seat hasn't moved in, you know, over a decade, you're going to have some problems there. And then you'll probably have, I think there's some wiring to pull out of here somewhere. Well, I've got this guy in here. That's fun. Oh, I almost forgot I did that. Yeah, you have seat switch wiring. And I've got this auxiliary jobby going on here too, so. All right, I'll just snip that for now. Yoink. More seat. Oh boy. You stay around here, you want a treat? You want a treat? Where'd I put them? You guys see where I put the treats? No? Hmm. Oh, here they are. All right, boy. Over here. Sit. Stay. All right, boy. No, sit. <coughs> Stay. <coughs> all right, all right. All right. Now get out of here. Go on. No, by the way. Hey. Go on. Yeah, here. Okay, so the seat, now we've got some pedals to remove here. And uh, nothing really special about these. Boy, that reverse linkage is just shot. Um, yeah, nothing special about these. You got a 916, I believe. Pop off. There's the reverse. And there's the forward. And just put those back in. I'll bring you down here so you can actually see what I'm doing here in a second. And the brake lever. Definitely going to be sad to see this one go. This has been a great machine. Got it about 10 years ago. It said it had about 600 hours on it, but the hour meter wasn't working. The engine was overheating. The rear end was completely shot. Like the bearings had basically been destroyed and the, uh, the whole axle could be moved like an inch in either direction inside the bore. This is the aluminum trans, not the cast iron one, uh, which people kind of knock them, but I, don't really see much issue with them. They do have two common problems, but we'll get into that a little later. So right here, you got your linkage for your reverse and your forward and your brake pedal. And just put the nuts back in there. So we've got those out of the way. If yours has diff lock, which this one did, you're going to have a diff lock pedal over here. Now this one's been modified. It's got an open diff rear end in it that I swapped. So it doesn't have the diff lock craziness. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't. It was the quickest, easiest thing to do at the time was to just swap in an open diff. So, okay. So now you got your pedals and your seat. You've got some, I believe these are half inch here. Yeah, these guys holding the fender down to the frame. And there. Oh yeah, there's some up there too. I forgot about those. 
pretty standard, simple stuff there. Um, then you pop your side panels off. You've got pop your side panels off, and then you've got two more fasteners, or maybe is it one? I mean, I haven't done this in a while. I think, yeah, maybe just one right down here that holds the fender to the firewall. Same thing on the other side. Uh, then check your wiring. Make sure everything's disconnected. There's probably, if the factory lights are still there, you know, you should probably disconnect the factory lights in the back. And I think the gas cap is probably the next thing. And then we're about ready to heave ho and get it off there. Um, I've seen, you know, some people will actually separate the fender from the uh, footboard, but, and that, I don't know. I think that the bolts underneath here are a pain to deal with, so tilt the steering wheel forward, pop off the gas cap because it's covering the top of the fender there, and then it should loosen up. And then what I like to do is throw this gap if I can. Oh, that's right. I gotta get that off too. Man, I'm forgetting all kinds of stuff. So. Set this back down for a sec. I'm going to pull this shield off so you can tilt the fender pan out of the way. So this just has... Yeah, it's been... Yeah, like I said, I haven't had to do anything to this in so long that I kind of forget how it goes together. So this intake screen here has some wing nuts that hold it to the firewall. Otherwise, you can't really pivot the, uh, the fender pan very well. It's actually, some of this stuff is, I gotta give it to MTD. It's kind of clever the way it's put together. I mean, yeah, it's probably put together kind of cheaply, but, you know. Alright, so now the fun part, which is wrestling this thing off of here. I screwed up my finger, so I'm gonna have to be kind of careful. I don't have a lot of grip in this finger right now. Um, there, pop it loose. What I was trying to say before is what I'll try to do is get it so I can throw this gas cap back on the gas tank so you don't get all the grass and stuff inside the tank while you're wrestling this around. I don't have to screw it down all the way and just get it. Get it in there. And so this lever here is kind of the, the hinge point you're trying to get around. So you just it up, separate it from here, make sure it's coming up here. The Kawasaki has a module sitting right here. Um, so it makes it even a little better than it would normally be. And then you gotta clear that lever, right? things first now that it's off there we can see everything we need to see down in here so let's just make sure the dry shafts actually turning yes dry shaft turns just fine if you look in here problem area is to be aware of while you're in here uh, hydraulic leaks very very common from these spool valves, this one's been leaking for a little while. It's not terrible, but I think I'll probably take care of it while I'm in here. Under heavy use, this spool here, this particular one on my tractor, leaks about every six months. I gotta pull it apart. I think the machining tolerances just suck. I don't think they were, this spool's just worn, probably, or was improperly machined, because it, 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 it'll go through seals, you know. Like I said, about every six months, depending on how much you use the lift. So you see your hydraulic lever here. Next to the spool here. 
All right, and so we're, this one actually leaks uh, right out of the top of the spool right here. Right where that goes into the top of the valve. So it's the spool itself that's leaking on this one. It's not the lines. Anyway, be aware of that leak while you're in there and fix it. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this video. Right now we're just diagnosing why this thing does not have any hydraulic anythings. So on the back of this hydrostat, this is a BDU-12, I think. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. This is a Hydrogear hydrostat with a charge pump on the back of it. And the charge pump keeps consistent fluid and consistent pressure in the hydrostatic transmission regardless of the actual flow in the hydrostat itself. So the word charge in the, in charge pump kind of describes what it does. It keeps a charge of fluid and pressure, flow and pressure, enough to keep things lubricated and to equalize the uh, closed loop system as it's uh, returning fluid and pulling fluid from any of the components back into the hydrostat. So, uh, if the charge pump goes on these things, which is actually quite common, you will lose all of your you'll use lose all of your hydraulics because there is no charge pressure being delivered to the hydrostatic pump, and so there is no way for it to no way for it to transmit any of the any of the fluid through the pistons and through the valve block and out to the forward and reverse and out to the power steering and out to everything else. So that's the thing. I'm looking back wrong side this week. So how do we <coughs> how do we determine that this thing is bad? Well, you basically just gotta pull it off. So let's uh, let's get the gas tank out of the way. And since I know that this is a problem with these tractors, I'm just gonna start there because it's actually probably the path of least resistance right now. So looks like my grommet took a crap here. So my pickup tube is gonna need some work. And I've got this hitch plate over top of the gas tank. So we gotta at least hinge the hitch plate out of the way to get to that. I think these are half inch down here. Okay. No. No, they are 9 sixteenths. So I can't pull the gas tank out right now because it slides down behind this hitch plate. So we gotta get rid of the old twisty twist. I have modified this as well, and I tack welded the nuts back behind this plate so I don't have to hold, I don't need two wrenches to get this off. Seems like I've been in here before, huh? Sometimes it's kind of nice to revisit the machines you haven't worked on in a while. It's like an old friend. Wow, this thing's got cobwebs on it and everything. It just has not been used at all. Uh, yeah, it's like a uh, the history of the machine's kind of unfolding as I work on it. And since I've never done a video with this machine, there we go. I'm gonna probably just let it sit like that. Um, I'm also kind of learning as, I'm, I'm remembering things as I'm communicating them too, which is kind of cool. I'm going to pull the hitch plate all the way off. It doesn't need to come all the way off, but I'm going to do it. Because I'm probably going to replace the fuel filter while I'm in here too. So if you have the Kawasaki, it's got a, an electric fuel pump back here. And uh, it's got a pickup filter before the pump. This is heavier than it needs to be. So, there's the hitch plate. The pickup tube, or the, uh, the check tube there for the um, fuel tank, or for the, for the rear end. Um, 
Uh, this is the disconnect lever. So this is one of the things to check and make sure that this is not pulled so that the valve is stuck open and then it'll be dumping all of the fluid back to the tank. Here goes our fuel tank. Shouldn't have been able to pull it out that easily because there should be the main fuel line still connected to it, but here we are. Now, with this stuff out of the way, we have access to the charge pump. And I'm going to throw this back in here. See if there's anything in there. And then probably blow all that crap out of there. All right, let's blow this off. Now that's shut down. We'll do this too. Uh, you know, dirt is the enemy of dirt and heat are the enemy of hydraulics. So uh, I've actually replaced this charge pump once before, so I'm going to be a little surprised. Um, they had a batch of bad ones that went into the 3000 series. Something about the machining tolerances between. Uh, well, you'll see when I open it up. It'll be easier to explain if it's the issue. It'll be easier to explain while it's opened up. I guess we'll pull the lines off first. Yeah, that's probably the best bet. So these are 3000 series uh, hydraulic lines. So they're basically just a two O-rings, or an O-ring and a backing ring. And then they're sandwiched into the bodies of whatever they go to with like a hold-down plate. So I've got, I believe those are 7 sixteenths. In there, and oh, it might be three eighths. I can't remember. No, there's seven sixteenths. So I'm gonna pop that one off. Pop this one off. See what we get. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a tight fit. I might have to grab the wrench. We'll try it with a ratchet first. Let's see if we can get to it. And they don't need to be bolted down super tight when we put them back together. It's going into aluminum and it's just there to just there to seat them, not to put any force on them. So the charge pump in this hydraulic system is like the fixed displacement portion of the system. This pump directly outputs fluid proportional to the RPMs that it's being turned. So well, we got some fluid here, but that might just be in the line. So this is a fixed delivery pump. This is this is like a like an automotive style oil pump basically is what it looks like. Positive displacement, I believe is what it's called. So it puts out a specific amount of fluid that changes based on RPM. Whereas the hydrostat is a, a variable pump and it only puts out the amount of fluid and flow that you demand from it. This guy, this is like the, kind of like the dumb part of the system, I guess. And there are tests that you can do. There are some test points in the system where you can actually check for charge pressure and check for system pressure. But since I have history with this machine and since I kind of know the machine itself, I'm not going to do any of that kind of thing. Oh boy, that, one's, that might be the main, is that the main suction line. Yeah. Yeah, that one's going to be a little bit of a bear. I don't know if I want to remove it down at the bottom or just pull it up out of the way. Probably just, yep. I don't want to come out like that, does it? Well, I don't know if you can see what I'm fighting with here. Yeah, you can kind of see it, right? 
So this pot, this uh, pipe goes all the way down to the bottom of the transmission. And I don't want to remove it down there if I don't have to. Where's it go? Yeah. Well, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. Let me get you under there and you can see. So this pipe here, kind of stuck in place, won't really go anywhere. It goes up underneath, down here. And the problem with that is that it is at the bottom of the transmission. Um, so, I don't want to loosen it all the way because I'm going to lose all the fluid. So I'm wondering if there's a way I can get away with not doing that. Let's see if I can get it to move at all. I'm up out of that seat. Oh, there we go. Yep, it just barely popped up over it. I bet... I can wiggle it out of there, and that's what I'm going to try to do. So now we're going to metric. So these are all standard. This, these here are metric. There's two bolts that hold the charge pump in. These two hold it into the main hydro assembly. And those are not standard. Those are metric. I don't want to move. I wouldn't mess around and put them on there, would I? Because that's going into a cast piece, so that's not really that's not really as big of a deal. Pop these off of here. Those out. Pull this off. Get this tube going hook from it. There we go. Ooh yeah, pretty sure. Oh, that's the problem. Okay. So before I touch anything, I'm gonna show you up close. We have confirmed diagnosis now, which is fortunate and unfortunate. Fortunate because we found it, and we were correct in spending this time to just pull this apart. But what happens is the rotor, which is this piece, the inner rotor right here, cracks and breaks and then gets chunked up. If you look in the other side of the charge pump housing, she's pretty chewed up. So we're going to pull these apart from the tractor, pull them off the tractor and put them on a bench. And uh, we'll take a look. Definitely why we lost all of our flow though. It definitely chewed up that housing pretty good. Oof. It might be salvageable, it might not. 